Welcome to another exciting episode of Farming Farm GH um, series. Yes, as we promised you earlier on, we are going to take you through uh, a lot of um, farming activities cut across, be it poultry, fish farming, vegetables, anything farming at all. We are going to give you updates and insightful gifts for you to for it to help you to become a successful farmer. Yes, and on today's episode, we are going to chance on broiler farming. Yes, but please, 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 and please again, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and keep the notification button on. Please, please, again, that is how you can also support us to grow. Yes, and if you want to support this program or sponsor, have your product or anything service sponsored on this show, you can contact any of the Named group and we will attend to you. Thank you. All right, so back to the episode we are on today. We are on, on broilers farming today. When we talk about broiler farming, we wanted to know what is broiler farming. Broilers, in the sense, is a breed of uh, poultry that is specifically for their meat consumption. So they are not for the eggs. The eggs is for the layers, and broilers are for uh, the meat consumption. All right, so people would like to do light scale broiler farming, and in Ghana, um, broiler business is really, really low because of the importation of foreign chicken. And the same, in, in, the, in, the, in the meanwhile, uh, when you want to venture into such business, there are some challenges you might face. But when you do it right, you can meet the market standard and you might grow as well and be successful in this business. So as I explained earlier, broiler simply means keeping chicks. Uh, chickens for their meat consumption exactly so on, on the serious note planning and how to go into this business is mainly like how we do the uh, the egg farm or the, the, the layers so with that you need to have a, a systemic plan in place that you are going to uh, structure, structure your things and strategize how you're going to be in this particular market so with the first thing we'll ask you to do is look for uh, a piece of land, yes, a piece of land that is the basic of this whole thing. A piece of land, and the land should be suitable for farming, and it shouldn't be in the residential place, as we stated in the egg farm business. Yes, it shouldn't be in a residential place because they also produce the droppings, produce a huge smell, and you need to be very careful when venturing into any poultry business at all. Yes, so the land is one important thing, and trust me. Going into the land issue, you need to be comfortable with where you are having your, 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 your farm and is it accessible to the target market? That is one important thing. Brothers are short time, uh, you, you have to do them or keep them in a short time, unlike the layers that you need to keep them for a longer period so they provide the eggs for you. This one, you need to, they will be ready for the market within six to eight weeks. They will be mature and ready for the market. So you need to be very careful when going into, into this. And one important thing you need to keep in place is um, the neatness of the place. Because of how they grow to outweigh their body, you need to have a very clean environment for them to for it to be conducive for them to grow. And you need to put everything in place, every measures in place, being the biosecurity, their feeding, what have you. You need to keep all those things in place. And mind you, when you are going into this business, one thing you need to know is also get an expertise and human resource advice, a human resource personnel and an expertise advice. You need to get someone who has been in this particular business for a longer period, not less than six years or seven years. You need to get somebody with an insightful knowledge about this business because broiler business can collapse anytime and you can lose all your best at a go. It's very, very crucial, so you need to take care of it as well and put measures in place. For instance, uh, if you get anyone interested to be in the farm to cater for your, your, your toilets, you need to be sure that the person is very, 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 very educated and knows the do's and the don'ts for this particular business. Unlike the egg business that you can get any human resource at all to support you, to support a farm manager, but this you need a very technical person to be on the side because of how it's hard to be handled even before it serves to the market. That is one important thing, yes. So when you are done with this expertise advice, draw a business plan or a proposal in place. And business plan comes with proposals as well. You need to strategize how you are going to get your target market. Some people have a niche market for this particular product because they can have a particular hotel or a restaurant they provide for. That is a niche. You have a specific target group that you are providing for. 
So with that, you are always confident that, okay, when you do this, within the next eight weeks, you are sending them right away to this particular market. Unlike those who are doing it in commercial business that you are going to find for the market, you need to draw all this plan in a book or anywhere that you can have a reference for and how you're going to do your expansion, the type of brick you're going to have, the money that is coming into this business, the money that will be going out from this business. You need to have a speculated time and uh, a drafted, uh, clear business plan in place for it to guide you. And their uh, structure is different from the layers. The main reason I'm saying if you're going with them, with the uh, battery case system, it's different because they don't produce the eggs. And mind you, broilers do lay eggs. That is very important. Broilers do lay eggs, but at a longer time when you keep them. But within six to eight weeks, they will be ready for the target market. So if you are not going to do them for the eggs, then you need to take them, clear up, clear them off from the farm as early as possible because they spend the feed that they consume is twice that of a layer in a day. They eat a lot. They need to keep in place a good drinking system for them because if you stop them with water, they can die any moment. Broilers are, they mostly outgrow their strength. They grow beyond their age. So if you don't take care, they, they will be even be eating and they can have, have an experience where a brother was eating and passed out because he choked off water and you need to get accessible water to them anytime, any day, wherever they, they found them. It's very important, very, very important. So when you are through with all these steps, you need to find out the market that you are going to serve them. Is it going to be the raw chicken you are going to give them or is it going to be dressed? If you have a niche market, that one can uh, be decided with your suppliers but one thing you need to know is when you are doing it in a larger scale for every market you need to know how you are going to dress them and package them packaging is one important thing in uh, broiler business you need to have this very beautiful and nice packaging and the feed let me come back to the feed because the main reason Ghana was facing a huge problem with the broiler business in Ghana with the poultry farmers is that the importation of the foreign chickens comes in sizes but when you feed them in locally, the sizes it somehow differ from what we have. So people will prefer the one outside than the one we have here. So you have to give them a correct and quality feed for them to match up to the foreign importation ones. So you need to be very careful when going into it. That is uh, some of the challenges you have. You might probably be facing. But when you get a right target market, it's easier for you to have all this in place. Yes, so when you are done with all this, I think for now, these are the basics, but as time goes on, we might delve into the detailed um, things you need to know in this business, meaning their feed formulation, uh, the weights, and everything that you need to know. So, specifically, I will take you through a few um, frequent questions people ask. You know, we have uh, people out there who are asking questions, uh, they want to know about this broilers and all that, so we're going to take you through the uh, questions that they do ask and uh, I had a question from someone what said uh, what are the breeds of broilers chicken just like any other farming uh, farm animals yes broilers have different breeds as well so we have the honey the extra uh, broilers we have types and it's always advisable to consult your extension and Greek extension officers to help you in because the climate changes and differs and one important thing is broilers we have occasions we can put broilers. Let me put it that way. Most farmers, most egg, uh, uh, egg farmers, what they do is to before or during, uh, they strategize their plan that uh, they will go in. They will still do the egg business or the layer business, but they will have a time for to, to do the broilers because broilers have to be occasional. In our part of the world, broilers are mostly for occasional purposes. Once in a while, someone can go into the market to get. Uh, a chicken, a live chicken to, to come to the house to kill. But they will prefer the frozen ones than over that. But during Christmas festivities, people will prefer to go for that one, either for gift for someone or for their personal or the family consumption. So you need to be very careful when going to that. Most farmers here, within, during October, a month or two to Christmas, then they start with the broiler uh, farming. And they have a, a just a short span that you can have them in place for the markets. So you need to be very careful. One, you have to just draft a 
very good structure for your farm that you're going to put these things to business. And mind you, if you are doing an, a layer farm, you can use the boilers to introduce yourself to the market in the sense that when your, your, your layers are not ready or they are not at their laying point, you can calculate the time and use that period uh, for instance, October to start with the broilers, then December you can start selling to the public and introduce your farm to the market so that consumers out there can identify your farm and come over when they need eggs as well. So you can use this as a strategy to introduce yourself to the market, yes. And we have someone asked, how many days, sh how many days should a day old broiler be brewed? It's very important. It's very very important. So it depends on the current seasonal weather. That is one important. As I said earlier, the current season change differs. Yes, we have in Africa we have uh, rainy season and the dry season. But when you are brooding the broiler, you need to take notes of this particular period as well. Unlike when you are doing this for the Christmas festivities, so you need to be very careful how and when you go into this business. And trust me, you don't have to brood them more than two weeks because they have roughly like six to eight weeks uh eight weeks uh duration or ready for market so you need to uh just strategize how you're going to go about this yes and um a lot were asking what vaccines and drugs should i give my brother that's i will advise you that you seek uh vet expertise advice that is the most important thing you need to seek your veterinary ad advice always and it's one crucial thing in poultry always don't forget your veterinary advice let them be in the farm most of the time and one secret is don't let any pets who has visited anybody's farm to be in your farm it's very very wrong to do that you need to be very careful when uh, a farmer visits another farm or when a pet visits another farm and comes with them it's very dangerous you need to stop that that is because they can easily spread disease and viruses in your farm. Yes, another question was, can I give my broiler grower mash? Of course, giving them grower mash will not harm them. You can feed them with grower mash. It's very important. There will be a great difference, but you need to, it's very important. How can I make my broiler grow bigger or heavier? Yes, all depends on your brooding stages. You need to be very careful when growing the feed that you feed with them. How the stipulated or calculated feed to give them in a day. Know that. And uh, it's very important to, to know that the feed consumption is very, very important for broilers because that is what they depend on to grow to get to the weight or the, the size you are looking for. Yes. Uh, will broiler perform better in battery cage? Yes. It's, it's very important with battery cage, broilers do grow better and deep litter as well, no different. But the two, I would prefer battery cage because of the easily spread of diseases among them, because of uh, the isolation, in case you identify any bed who's not feeling well, you can easily take the bed out. And also, uh, they are dropping, they don't come into contact with their dropping because every minute they are eating. So, when they see anything out there, they can just dip their uh, mix into it. So, you need to be very careful. So, battery cage will do good and wonders for your farm as well. Yes, I think on this note, we'll just end this episode here. And if you have you want more more consultants on this particular topic contact any of the numbers below and we will be right attend to you please and please again don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel and we love you and we want to grow with you so keep the notification button on and subscribe to our youtube channel and please we want any consultation or you want to sponsor this program or have a product or service you want to market on this project just contact any of the numbers below then we'll communicate with you Thank you and see you again. Bye.